Hello there, I'm Alyssa Olenek, scientist, exercise enthusiast, weightlifter, outdoors lover, and entrepreneur. I believe that the extremes in the fitness and wellness industries are leaving way too many of us out of the conversation, not telling us the knowledge that we actually need to succeed in our health, our wellness, our nutrition, and quite frankly, our lives. They end up giving us black and white polarizing messages that leave us more confused than giving us the answers that we need. Through my 10 years of studying exercise science, metabolism, and female physiology, as well as exploring the outdoors and being a fitness athlete myself, I'm here to bring to you the conversations that need to be had in an industry that often is too far focused on extremes. So if you join me on this podcast, I truly believe that life is best lived in the messy middle. Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Messy Middle Podcast X Docless Fitness YouTube. So as always, if you're listening to this on podcast platform, if you want to go rate, review, subscribe on whatever you're listening to and or head over to my YouTube channel to like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and comment my videos. It helps me. And if you're coming from YouTube and you want to go rate, review, subscribe because you enjoy this on a podcast platform, again, it helps and supports me so I can continue to produce free, high quality educational content for you all here today. So with that being said, today I want to talk to you about something that I think is a big, massive concern when it comes to hybrid training, where individuals are either adding lifting to their running or running to their lifting. And so what I'm talking about is the temporary decrease in performance that we see when we start engaging in hybrid or concurrent training that makes us believe that we are, one, not able to hybrid train, two, hybrid training doesn't work, or three, we are losing fitness. And so With this being said, it is perfectly normal that if you've been historically a lifter or historically a runner and you start adding in more training, that you're either going to see a decrease, slight performance in your individual workouts um, from the fatigue of that training or a need to back off or do a little bit less. And we cover this in hybrid. This isn't something that I am hiding from you all or keeping from you all. This is a very real phenomenon because you only have so much volume you can handle and recover from and or your body is spending a lot of effort trying to adapt to that new training stimulus. So for those of you who are new here and don't know what hybrid training is. It's essentially mixing together strength and or endurance in some form concurrently in the same training session, week, block, month. And it can be multiple forms of fitness combined together. Um, But this is really similar to how general athletes train and or the type of training that I take, CrossFit takes, a lot of my clients take really anything that's mixing modalities that isn't you're only doing Olympic lifting, you're only doing powerlifting, you're only doing running, and you're only doing rock climbing, you're only doing one thing. Um, concurrent hybrid training is just saying, hey, I'm going to mix these modes. And so there is benefit for lifters to do cardio and cardio people or runners to do lifting on top of that. Um, and you can do it in small degrees and have really no impact just for cross training for minimum effective dose benefits. But if you're trying to maximize both or get better at both or add both into your training, people see a slight decrease in performance following the onset of that new training and they really think that that means they're doing something wrong and I'm here to say that you're not doing anything wrong this is normal again your body can only recover from so much and your body needs to adapt to that new stressor or new stimulus whether it's lifting or endurance based training and so what you'll see is slight temporary decreases in your acute training performance which really doesn't mean a loss of fitness it just means due to fatigue from the hybrid type training a fatigue from the additional training fatigue from the more volume or the fatigue from the the novel stimulus because central nervous system fatigue from cardio or your lifting can affect one another. Um, It's decreasing your short term performance in your training goals in the other thing. So if you are moving slower with the bar, you're running slower on the roads, you're cycling slower, your Metcons are a little bit slower or more fatigued, whatever it is that you're doing that is decreasing your performance, that is an acute decrement and that might just be coming from fatigue from your previous sessions. And it does not mean lack of fitness. It doesn't mean you're losing fitness in the other one. And it doesn't mean that you're actually not gaining fitness during those training sessions. You could still be easily gaining fitness in your running, your cycling, your Metcons, your lifting, whatever it is, even though you're fatigued using that RPE based model that allows you to auto regulate, you can still be making forward, moving forward, making progress, getting better without a total loss in training. What you need to do though, is to stick through that short term decrease and that suck window and your ego getting in the way and feeling like it's not working and let your body adapt to that new stressor or stimulus. So if you're adding in running and you've been historically a lifter or I've been doing a ton of hiking, um, your lifting performance in the short term is gonna kind of feel crappier and it's gonna feel like it's, you're not able to move as much weight, you have more fatigue, your RP is higher, the same loads and intensities, but you need to keep going. Same with my runners who add in lifting and they're a little bit more sore and more fatigued and they feel like it's a killing their running performance. You need to keep going because what happens over time by doing both of these with increased training age, increased volume exposure, increased training, more progression, mixing the two 
to is you will adapt. And so you have to let your body adapt to the one in order for you to kind of bounce back to the other. Because once you adapt to that training, because new training, novel training makes you more fatigued. It's going to make you more sore. It's going to feel hard on your body. It's going to increase and increase caloric demand in the short term. Maybe not as much in the long term, but in general, again, listen to my uh, hybrid training mistakes podcast where I talk about food and carbs and all of that stuff. Um, but you have to let your body adapt to the different stimulus in order to allow both of them to move forward together. So if you have my ebook hybrid or if you don't have it yet, you definitely need it because we talk about this, about the basics, the very big rocks and the very big bottom of this pyramid of, of hybrid training. And you have to have a good aerobic base and you have to have a good strength base. And if you don't have one versus the other, you kind of have to maintain the one or hang out in the one while you develop the other simply because it's more fatiguing, it's harder on your body and or it's requiring more of your recovery and or your energy output and as you get more fitness in both or either you're able to build on that over time and then you're able to start to maximize that hybrid performance doing both together increasing both at the same time or maintaining one without it kind of dropping back down as you increase the other so you have to increase your training age you need to increase your ability to handle more volume. And by more volume, I need mean more like lifting reps, sets, weights, time in the gym and or running miles or cycling miles or total time in each domain of your training. But that slight temporary decrease in your training doesn't mean that you're bad. So what you need to do during that time is really utilize something like RPE during your training. Um, zones too can be really helpful to tell you where your fatigue is going with your running or endurance based training and by using those things you're able to kind of auto regulate your training so you're still getting the appropriate stress and stimulus of that one training even if it feels slightly more fatiguing or slightly more difficult or harder it's going to be that way but you can still make adaptations even if your acute short-term performance is worse I cannot stress that enough or reiterate that enough and then you need to focus on the one that you're not so good at keep doing it don't quit and allow your body to adapt to that and remember, adaption isn't just one or two weeks. It really does take like six, 12 weeks, six months. It takes time. And so you might feel like, well, I'm losing all my fitness and these other things. And that's why I really improve encourage people to take a seasons approach. So you have a season where you're just focusing on that thing that you're not as good at, you need more of, where the performance and the other thing isn't your main priority. Well, you can still improve that and or maintain it using something like RPE, progressing over time, progressing as you adapt to the other stimulus, um, it's not as much of an ego blow because you're not training for a race while trying to add this in. You're spending time specifically intentionally developing the fitness in this one area so that long-term, that fitness that right now is more fatiguing, more detrimental to your short-term acute performance is something that you adapt to so then it's not as stressful to your body so you can handle more of that while doing the other thing. And that is the entire point and approach of hybrid training, the hybrid training pyramid and the approach um, of improving it over time, taking multiple seasons and improving things for long-term gains rather than short-term acute in gym performances. So yeah, you might perform worse during these things, but that doesn't mean that you're performing worse long-term and it doesn't mean you are, aren't adapting. The same thing goes for people who are gaining more muscle or more mass with these things. To some point, it's probably parabola where gaining too much mass starts to negatively impact your um, aerobic performance and or losing too much mass starts to negatively impact your lifting performance. But you can find that sweet spot uh, for yourself. But gaining more muscle means it's more aerobically costly. So it's going to be harder for your body to do the same work it did before because it's going to need more oxygen to do that. But the biggest thing though is that as you develop more muscle tissue, you also have to develop that muscle tissue to be more aerobically capable. And that comes with training over time. So you need to kind of stick to the, your guns so that you can adapt and make progress within that so both can move forward over time. But sometimes moving forward in two things at once means holding the current position of one as you increase the other and then letting the other rise back up to catch it or kind of letting it slowly build as you work and focus on the other one. So I really want people to recognize that sometimes for many of us, you just don't have the fitness status, training age, exposure, and or athletic history that doing these things and adapting and developing two different energy systems or approaches to training might be a little bit harder and may take more time versus someone who's kind of been a lifelong athlete, been doing multiple things for years, or has a really strong history in just running or just lifting or just one form of training versus the other. Because when you have a really strong history in something and a really good training age and a really good training history in that, it's a lot easier to maintain that than it was to gain it. So gaining fitness is going to be harder than maintaining fitness. And this is why we see people who are doing this hybrid based training who had very impressive or serious lifting histories and past me included who can just start adding on running because at some point yes our lifting is being 
impaired, but we're able to maintain more of that higher ceiling for strength and potential or muscle development while adding in the cardiovascular training or running. Same with runners. As they start adding and lifting, it sometimes just benefits them and makes them better because they already had that time spent on that aerobic training component of their training. So if you have a long or stronger history in one versus the other, take the time to build the other one. But if you are my friends who are coming from really the ground up, you were not an athlete growing up, you're mostly sedentary, you don't have a strong training history in each, you really need to make sure that you're building both. You can build both at the same time, but you just can't handle as much. So you're going to need more recovery. So it might be worth your time to spend seasons going between one or the other or giving yourself grace as it takes slower and longer to build. It's kind of like bulking versus cutting or maintaining and recompositioning with dieting. Um, if we want to use that analogy, sometimes it's better to spend more time doing one or the other than trying to do both at once. But it doesn't mean you can't do both at once, especially if you're a beginner, right? Same thing, uh, where that stress, it can be more po potent than people who've been training for a really long time trying to do both at the same time. So it kind of does play into the classic exercise physiology approach of you can't do two things at once. Well, you can, you just have to be strategic, a program it appropriately, and take a recognition of where you're at in your training. But short-term decreases in performance does not mean long-term decreases in performance. And I cannot stress that enough. I think that's a common misconception with hybrid training, and it doesn't mean it's not working for you. It just means that you're fatigued. You need to eat more. You need to recover more. Or you really just need to let your body adapt to the thing that is new um, instead of trying to force it to do, be perfect at both at once. In order to be efficient at both those things, you have to let your body adapt to that new thing, especially if you weren't exposing it to that type of training before. So giving yourself grace, giving yourself time, recognizing these things are not just a quick six week challenge, but really months and years of training. Um, and if you're struggling with this, my hybrid ebook, it is not a training program. It is an ebook, um, explains to you the science behind these things and how to combine your endurance training, your CrossFit training, your cycling, your running, whatever it is with your resistance training in a way that makes sense for your current training level, your recovery needs, how much volume you can handle the season that you're in. If you're training for a race, if you're in an off season, all of these things with like 70 examples, um, so that you kind of know how to pair things appropriately for your own own fitness level um, across the week and or just understanding and applying the science to make the most of these things so you can adapt over time. I like to call it my fishbowl theory where like your volume capacity increases so you can do more of the both of the same thing or be better at both at the same time. But if you have less water, you can only do so much with that versus more water. So the goal is to increase your water volume over time. Um, so with that being said, we'll link hybrid in the show notes here. That's really helpful as well as if you want two programs in the same place when it comes to running and lifting or lifting and conditioning already program to complement it, that is the list method. So we do that for you. We program these things we give you a lifting program and or a running program that makes sense for you and your goals um, with multiple options to pick from so you can pair them together with some examples on how to do that so depending on what you're looking for we have the things that can help you with that but otherwise my friends give yourself patience give yourself grace give yourself kindness and don't shame yourself for temporary decreases in performance from fatigue across your whole training that do not indicate or necessarily mean you have decreased training across time. You might find that even training with RPE, even though it's lower weights, lower intensity, lower whatever it is, because you can't handle more, you might realize that once you taper or deload or whatever, and you go to test that fitness, you were still gaining it all along. You just had increased um, fatigue across time. This same phenomenon happens for my friends that are racing or training for a lifting meet or doing a big lifting block or whatever it is. You've experienced this before. You have this increased fatigue towards the end of these blocks before a deload or a taper and you feel like you've lost fitness, but it's just general fatigue from your training. But once you take that time off to recover, you realize that you've actually been developing fitness all along. So Keep that in mind when you're doing your hybrid training, you're not necessarily losing fitness in the short term. You are gaining fitness in the long term, but you might have slightly decreased training in the gym. So it's important to leave our egos at the door when we are doing these things. So I hope you enjoy this episode of the Messy Middle Podcast, X Docless Fitness YouTube. Again, subscribe, like, comment, all of the things, rate, review helps so much. Um, I hope you learned something today and I hope you feel like you can give yourself more grace or not freak out when you feel like you're losing fitness. You aren't losing fitness. You just need more time. And I think that kind of message applies to everything. You just need more time. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you learned something and I will catch you on the next one.